to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Job left us a very important key that begins our guide it, it serves as a guide for us tonight even as we begin to explore the subject of supernatural encounters many believers have for a very long time they they have been frustrated in their christian experience because their spiritual life looks like borrowed ideas they hardly have convictions of their own and so you find out that the average believer has to depend on the confidence of a pastor depend on the confidence of an apostle a prophet or the confidence of a corporate people to be able to believe certain things about god but god did not design us in this kingdom to have to depend on the conviction on of another to begin our journey it was his intent his desire that we get to a point where we become a people of persuasion and a people of conviction ourselves hallelujah job chapter 42 and verse 5 the mystery of supernatural encounters i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee i have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee when i began my journey with god there were many propositions that were brought forth from the pulpit well-meaning well-intentioned men and women of god I heard them say many things about God referenced from scripture they called God many names they advocated many levels and dimensions of possibilities that God could birth in the life and the experience of a believer but I didn't seem to see a manifestation of these things and it troubled me for a long time it looked like God remained a theoretical reality that men would not be able to step into that experience my heart yearned for a level of nearness that i did not easily see around me preachers seemed very distant from the god they were talking about conferences were written or conferences were organized books were written about a god that they seemed very far from and i knew that something was wrong I knew that something was wrong not necessarily with the communicators but with the whole idea I found out that there were many people who believed certain spiritual truths not because it had become true in their lives they believed them because they liked the communicators of those truths so their, 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 their faith in the truths that were communicated were not because they believed that those speakings were true. They believed that those who said them were sincere people, well-meaning people, or lovable people. But one thing I can tell you is that for as long as you live long enough upon this earth, your convictions will be tested from head to toe. And so it matters that the things that you hold there the things that you hold as true are true indeed the bible gives us a word of caution that you must be careful so that what you call light 
be not darkness did you know you can walk in a lie for many years you can teach a lie you can mentor people along the lines of a lie and then at the end of your life or when you have gone so far you will now realize that what you have been holding as true was a lie it is dangerous to believe a lie and hold it there and continue to build your destiny around that lie only for you to find out that what you believed was not true if i have any fear in my life or any concern in my life it is that i do not want to believe something that after many years i will find out that i've believed a lie and so i'm not ashamed to vet what i hold as true i am unashamed i will vet them unapologetically and if for any reason i find out that what i am holding is not the truth i would declare my disloyalty immediately and without turning back many believers are unable to be transformed because of the our emotional attachment to information that may have been embedded in our minds that may not be the truth the bible says the only thing that saves is the truth not what you like ye shall know the truth and it is the truth that sustains the power to make you free are we blessed the bible is full of encounters from genesis to revelation scripture lets us see that most of the people almost everyone who was mightily used by god as recorded in scripture at one point or the other in their lives they encountered the god of the bible in ways that were spectacular in ways that burned that conviction in their hearts and some of them died believing their experiences some of them based on that experience they rose to be mighty men and women who were used by god and it is important for us to study this subject of encounters because we are gathered today by the privilege of god's grace and this ministry you see is a product of encounters and it's important for us to know because if you lack encounters you will be surprised how stunted how limited you will be in your christian work are we together what are encounters let's discuss the subject of supernatural encounters very briefly and very quickly supernatural encounters are experiences that bring reality and conviction to us experiences that bring reality and they also bring conviction to us experiences sent by god to bring reality the awareness of a reality and to also bring conviction this is very powerful the way god designed man god designed man in a way that every time every time you are convicted and persuaded about a truth you stop being ashamed or afraid of it now the way the way we operate in the earth realm anything you are ashamed to advocate it is because there is no conviction in that area this is how god designed us are we together now so when you meet a herbalist as 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 tattered and as uninviting as he looks he is not ashamed of his state because there is a depth of conviction and persuasion he believes in what he is doing he believes in its ability to transform anyone who is interested and so he would sit down in a dark dirty or smelly place whatever it is he will conjure all kinds of rubbish and then he would tell you with certainty that this is able to bless your life this is able to transform you this is able to bring supernatural solutions and he will dare you encounters they are experiences supernatural experiences that bring conviction 
that establish or furnish the reality of God or the reality of anything whatsoever in the life of the believer please pay attention why are encounters important encounters are important because our walk upon this earth require conviction requires faith our earth work requires faith and faith is based on convictions convictions are based on encounters there has to be listen carefully there has to be if you are going to work effectively the bible says the just shall live by faith four times in scripture it says the just shall live by his faith and faith is predicated upon encounters i am holding a mic on my hand there is nothing you will say or do to convince me otherwise because my senses are relating with this reality are we together now i'm holding a mic your opinion may not have an effect on me because i am surrounded by the awareness of this reality it is lack of encounters that has produced the spiritual vacillations that we have in the body of christ today and so today i believe this tomorrow i believe this next tomorrow i do not believe what i used to believe again and then by next week i rush back and i think i now believe it all of these vacillations are proof that there is no certainty to the truths that we claim to know i'm not just talking of growth many believers today cannot exactly tell you they cannot make an articulate statement of the things that they believe today they believe god delivers and by tomorrow they say I'm, I'm not sure that i understand deliverance again and then next week they say okay i'm healed another time they say no 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 i'm not going to tell lies i am sick are we together now one moment they believe in confessing the word they are speaking the word another moment they say leave that thing it's not just about confession so you see that the vacillations in our christian experience they are proof to us that we are missing something there is something we do not understand about god and the way he works the second reason why we need encounters is that the the challenges that will surround your destiny and your assignment will require encounters to supply the staying power the power for continuity as far as your destiny is concerned will depend on encounters i can tell you this for free there is nobody's journey to destiny that will be entirely a bed of roses you are going to be confronted by issues vicissitudes of life men and systems and structures will stand to oppose that which god intends to do in your life it will take encounters to supply the staying power there are preachers who begin ministry for instance and they say i love god i was called to serve god and after two years of no results no success they pack it up and they say i'm tired let me just go and look for a job there are people today who resign their jobs because they thought they were called into ministry and after 10 years they look back and say oh dear god punished the man who advised me to, to leave my job and get into this vineyard i cheated myself i wasted my time no encounters encounters provide the staying power if you want to continue and finish strong you will depend on encounters more than information when you see some of our fathers of faith 20 years 30 years 40 years some 50 years continuing in the ministry serving the purposes of god i assure you an ambition does not have that kind of power to keep you long you will need encounters are we together now yes sir when you lack encounters anything that captures your attention for the moment will drive your life until you find another thing that seems to be valuable to you so you have all kinds of people today they are in business next tomorrow they are here next tomorrow they are here they they continue to rigmarole around life 
no reality no conviction no staying power i think it was last week or the week before last that i was whilst teaching i mentioned something that i should mention again there are many people today who were very very serious with god loving jesus passionately pursuing the purposes of god their entire lives revolved around the kingdom but today some of them in old age they are they are barely born again and if you ask them they will tell you i tried god i gave my best i committed everything god failed me this your christianity thing does not work have you found out the reasons why people leave god and the things of god you will be amazed some because of money someone offered some money and they will dump the faith life without thinking twice others because of marriage they find someone who is blessed and even if they are not of similar faith they just leave everything these are people who will sing all kinds of songs about their love for god people have left god in a heartbeat because they were looking for jobs people left ministry because they got visa they told everybody they had set up their leadership they set up protocol as soon as a door opened they said just continue serving god i will serve him from afar off i go and god said this is how much you love me i'm teaching you this otherwise you will be disappointed at your own life when you see the way you will forget about god in the presence of certain realities it is encounters that can keep us regardless how you rise regardless the lifting that comes to your life and regardless the challenges that surround you you are still standing many believers are falling by the wayside especially within this end time you see lots of believers after 10 years 20 years of serving the lord respectfully speaking they now come up to say look i've been living a lie i don't care about this thing again i'm not serious with god i quit no encounters from altar call to spiritual growth most believers are not serious with god because they have not found god to be anything to be serious about are we following now yes there are many young people who are only serving god because they are under the custody of their parents and they do not have an option otherwise it's not because they love that god let's do bible study and they grudgingly sit down and do it and then for many parents the day you now leave them to themselves you will be marvelously surprised that the person you have been calling pastor was never interested in anything about god other people hold on to god because they are in school and they want to do well they are hoping he would just escort them until they are done and once they are done they say god i've used you enough you find your way and go while i live my life Are we together now there are others who do this business of God because they have been taught that God can bless and when you are in ministry you can get honorarium when you are in ministry you can get all kinds of things someone can come and dash you a car somebody can give you a house and when they try they apply for jobs it doesn't work they apply for whatever they just come and then they start ministry and a semblance of passion and then after one year they realize they have to rent an auditorium they realize that there are things that are coming they count the offering and it's nothing to write home about and they say god i've tried for you i gave you one year of my life i'm not ready to continue being a fool like this because we do not have encounters a time came when the disciples of jesus became very frustrated listen when jesus began his journey with them i remember jesus telling them all kinds of things and they ran they left their fishing a time came peter was waiting for jesus to come and he said look we have left all to follow you if you are deceiving us tell us now so that we can redeem the time and get back to what we're doing and jesus looked at them they were offended they were frustrated the staying power to finish strong was not there as soon as they captured jesus 
and they thought that this superstar would just defeat everyone just shake his hand and everyone will be under the anointing when jesus gave himself watch what happened the bible says they ran away is it in your bible every one of them remember shortly before that time peter vowed jesus even pleaded with peter let me wash your feet he said no way not you now peter ran away the fathers of faith and the patriarchs that we celebrate today world over were not just people who were interested in serving god alone these were men and women who had solid encounters they had encounters with god encounters that would never they, they were not going to change from it most of my experiences and the new seasons in my life have come as a result of encounters most of them most of them have come as a result of encounters now let me tell you this there are negative demonic and satanic encounters pay attention i must tell you this for instance there are many people today in deception and the confidence that their deception thrives on is the encounters that they had there are many people who believe they went to heaven i tell you by the authority of scripture where they went was not heaven i can tell you this both the description the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to there are people today who claim they had out-of-body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits familiar spirits they thought it was the holy spirit do you know that almost every error in the body of christ today came as a result of these same encounters many people will tell you i had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me right and from there they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error people have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see i'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger hunger when you find a believer who is hungry please be fast to guide that person because satan too looks for hunger hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so you want to start on a journey i want to know you i want to live for you i want to serve you i want to love you with all my heart that drives you to a seven days dry prayer and fasting and you are praying you are lying down you're rolling left right and center and satan finds an opportunity your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration and satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds i will tell you why i'm teaching what i'm teaching tonight it's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because i fear for my generation our appetite for rema our appetite for new dimensions our appetite for the angelic realm our appetite for the prophetic realm is that is driving us into dimensions that if not guided you have not yet seen error that will come to the body i tell you in the next five six ten years if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of christ many young people will delve into different versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano also one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I'm jokes apart i really mean it i won't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking 
after service this boy stood wore a regalia and then someone was standing by his side I don't, I don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer hmm. prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit and i will teach you how to create that guidance encounters it i've started by appreciating encounters but i am telling you there there is there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of christ is in trouble and it's encounters that will lead to the error of this generation of believers encounters satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of christ through encounters pseudo christian experiences pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices they stepped into the prophetic and the holy ghost has never been part of any revelation most of those revelations come from demons do they hear well yes sir they hear now i'm not being listen listen when you when you are here don't just be listening and thinking of any man of god i'm teaching the body of christ because most of the people you see when you hear this some of us already have preconceived biases and the bias is because we've never really been serious with god it's not because we are passionate we've not been serious with god so anything that looks supernatural we fight it i'm not endorsing your laxity There are all kinds of errors. Those errors continue to be translated into teachings. You see, the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter, the urge to document it and to share it is there. And we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause. Anything that is scarce, anything that is new, anything that looks like rema, it looks like you derive your respect in the body of Christ from the scarceness of your communication. If we are not careful, there will be bitter casualties. I tell you this by the Spirit. Many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation hmm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around asia eventually when i started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day i had to say uh 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 uh, 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 uh something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what i'm saying so you will understand number one encounters are important we need encounters so that they create convictions but number two encounters are a two a two-edged sword on one hand they can bless and lift but on another hand they can bring conviction towards error that destroys are we together so people have delved into all sorts of things young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things there are people who have bought all sorts of books 
you get into a christian library right now and you look at the books that are there sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books the moment you open you wonder was it the holy spirit who inspired this there are dangerous and devilish books there are people who have read certain books and while they were reading the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost they went into realms and dimensions interacted with strange spirits and came do you know how many religions are in the world we live in an internet age i give you as an assignment when you go type religions how many religions are in the world enter you will be amazed let me tell you this every single one of those religions have followers if they did not have followers they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion and those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters this is the secret that can preserve a destiny can preserve a ministry so that you don't start something and after 10 years you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again supernatural encounters now let me explain something why do encounters have negative side effects also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction it's called an encounter are we together now but now i'm talking about visionary encounters do you know if you are open to the realm of the spirit there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately you are open to the realm of the spirit number one you find out that being open to the realm of the spirit either by the holy ghost or any other spirit already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if i hold these plants in the realm of the spirit i don't have to study it biologically you see that now yes i can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding you have to understand how i'm giving you certain examples in the realm of the spirit time and distance does not operate the way it works here if i need to move from here to this fan i will have to walk but in the realm of the spirit i can be here and immediately leave this spot and i am there an example what happens to you when you are in a dream you can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes you are somewhere else the same you and yet you are still there lying down in your room are we together now now in the realm of the spirit the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions 
and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of christ we return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic because the prophetic works by the same formula you are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit but when there is no system to order and organize it based on scripture you can download all kinds of things that's why some work some don't work because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit what i'm teaching you may look a bit complicated but just pay attention you will understand what i'm saying hallelujah i have had several visionary encounters by the grace of god this is a realm of reality that i live in and i can tell you if the lord did not teach me the system of guidance that i want to provide for you i probably would have been in all shades of error by now all shades of error the next thing i need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes and you must understand not the activity but the spirit the meaning of those activities because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit so i give you an instance if in the realm of the spirit i I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing. I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening. I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw. So if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit, it may be a prophetic typology of something but then I come physically and I now say well based on what I saw except if God says to act it out but I now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle I must walk around five times with no understanding when god began to open me up to encounters i became troubled myself once upon a time those days in zaria there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust silver dust physically gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history it began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters it didn't last more than three weeks and god seized it till tomorrow it was an act of his mercy otherwise some people would have built monuments around it you see that now there is a serious disclaimer listen do you know why i'm teaching you this don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days fast 30 days unguided and unassisted it looks like an accurate spiritual journey but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle they will interact with devilish spirits they will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse you now regret the fact that you expose the people this way we have to be careful there is a pattern for spiritual growth and if we do not submit ourselves to it we will be in trouble when jesus christ began to walk with the disciples we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints are we together now 
supernatural encounters the realm of a spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities haven't said this the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or even, how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error The body of Christ today is like a patient in ICU and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance. There are men and women of God today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters. There are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters and you see one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence the moment you are convicted about something eventually someone will believe you hmm. i hope you're understanding what i'm teaching so far yes so the bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters this was the first thing the lord began to teach me that before i am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences i must understand the pattern of scripture so that all of these encounters i have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how god behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them i have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times i do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why i do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly i hear the holy ghost sometimes but, ah, I say, my goodness my god that means something is wrong with your christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand god intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us god does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there god just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine Are we blessed this is how the lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things i've seen standing here and preaching if i did not have this understanding that i'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon 
every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now The average man of God is under severe pressure right now. Pressure for the prophetic, pressure to be able to reveal something. If you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person, Acts chapter this verse, this says this, you, you, you can even see the disconnect. We wasted our time, prepared honorarium, cooked food to come and receive this rubbish. There, you see that there, there is something wrong. While you are laughing, I want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things god is not saying body of christ hear me this is not just a message for koinonia this is a message for the body of Christ. When a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God, he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned. I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears, but we're not interested. And very clearly the person becomes frustrated. And as a result, he will say, you know what? If this is the formula for relevance, let me go for my fasting. And the devil says, exactly. This is what I wanted. He waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from god's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you i submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what i want to teach you now there is a road map that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed So the Bible lets us know that encounters are very important. They create conviction. Whether encounters just with the word as you're studying or visionary encounters. When God was giving me a revelation about this ministry, I had supernatural encounters. I've shared some of them with you. My life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life. You would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters. They would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision. Is that true? And he saw this and that and explain it. Several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry. There are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of christ today now let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters rule number one no encounter is equal to doctrine 
no encounter no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine do not make doctrine out of encounters do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is god's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so if let me let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture every encounter no matter even if it's jesus you see any encounter must submit to scripture no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the holy spirit and scripture has to interpret that are we together now most people just come up with their ideas about encounters this is what i saw this is what i saw i think this should be it and we ship it down and mislead people that includes dreams look up please when you wake up from a dream you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it except if that book submits to scripture are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters take note of these rules one remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth jesus the early church the patriarchs have set enough precedence there is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain onto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for 
so doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture not your ideas scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Kateka Post Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline